Hi everyone, my name is Alexandre Albisser and I am a French freelance 3D artist. In this series of 10 tutorials, we will be making a really cool procedural trailer running infinite loop animation. We will be using Blender geometry nodes and simulation zones, a bit of scripting, some MIDI audio processing using Ableton Live, and compositing in DaVinci Resolve. This first episode will be focused on the scope of the project and the base setup of the character assets. So let's get right into it. I started this tutorial with the idea of having a character run across an infinitely generating terrain forming right under his feet, in a realistic style. In order to not have to work with a realistic character, I wanted to have an invisible man with only his cloth. So I made this quick photomontage as a reference. To make things more interesting, we will blend between five different animations depending on the slope of the terrain, then we will efficiently generate an infinite treadmill terrain, we will need to implement the blending of the animations, also retime and synchronize them with a simple script, then we will start the procedural environment with rock, soil and grass, design an interesting character and add the lighting and texture, add the procedural wooden bridge biomes, some procedural trail signage and trees, other biomes, then we'll work to make the animation loops by overriding the simulation, and finally we'll make a simple script to bake the geometry of the data to a MIDI file which you can interpret to make procedural footstep sounds before compositing everything and adding sound design. To make everything easier, and because I am not a great character animator, we are going to get all our motion capture data from the free Adobe asset library at mixamo.com. First, let's select the mannequin character, which we are going to use later. And for the animations, I will start with the working animations. Type work. I will start with this work animations. Just select it, check in place, and download it. This one will be work normal. Now for the slower one, which is going to be this one, I'm doing the same, check in place, and download it. I'm just going to call it work heavy. For the running animations, we'll do the same with first this one, which is going to be the fastest one. Then scroll a bit, we'll take this one, and finally, right beside it, we have our intermediate running one, which is going to be run fast. And here are the five animations we downloaded and the name I gave them. In a new and empty Blender scene, let's import our mockup data. Let's move on to the animation tab. And in order to test the setup of everything, I'm just adding a quick displaced mesh that will emulate the terrain we will create later. Just add a plane, subdivide it a bunch of times, add a displace modifier with a new texture, set to cloud, a subdivision surface modifier, and set shade smooth. I am going to call it Terrain Collision Realized. So the setup we need to do with this animation is to make sure the feet of the characters are always snapping to the ground. And this is what we are going to test with the mesh I just added. Because at the moment, all the animations are just set up to work on a flat ground. When imported, a Mixamo animation is just set up in a way called forward kinematics, which means that to move the end bone, you must move all the bone along a chain, which is not really nice. So to easily make sure that the feet are always staying on the ground, we need to switch all that from forward kinematics to invert kinematics. Luckily, Mixamo made a Blender add-on to do just that. So once it is downloaded and installed, you just need to click on your armature and click on Create Control Rig. Now if you go into pose mode and move the control for the feet, you will see that all the chain is correctly recomputing. So let's switch all the armature we just imported also, when imported, the Mixamo animation data is just a bunch of keyframes. But to work with it easily later, we need to freeze all that to work the, with the animation in a single block, which is called an NLA strip. So move up the second timeline in the animation tab and switch it to nonlinear animation. Here we have the five animations we just imported and displayed properly. So the first step is to give everything its final name. So let's rename everything, both the strips and the armature. The longest will be work heavy. Then we have work normal, run normal, 
run fast, and finally run fastest. Now it's renamed, we can push down all the action to freeze the NLA strips. Now let's correct the fit position. Let's just focus on a single rig. I'm going to work with run normal, select everything, underground, and click Shift H to isolate this selection. We are going to add constraints to the fit control boxes so they are always stuck on the ground. Let's first do that with the control foot on the right. Select it, go into bone constraint, and add a shrink wrap constraint. For the target, select our terrain collision realized. At the moment, it is just sticking to the nearest surface point. It might just want to stick everywhere and move from left to right. So to fix that, we need to change the mode from nearest surface point to project, set face curl to front, that will remove a bunch of bugs later, and for align to normal, you can set it to Z so that the rotation of the foot will always match the rotation on the ground at this point. Now, if you move around your ground collision, you will see that the foot is sinking under the plane. And this is because the foot bone is actually in the middle of the ankle, as you can see here, which is around 0.1 meter above the ground. So we need to set this distance here and set the snap mode to outside surface. Now it works pretty well. If you play the animation, you will see that the foot is always stuck on the ground, which is kind of problematic because we still want it to be in the air sometimes. To fix that, we are going to add a second shrink wrap constraint to the bone, still targeting our plane, set the snap mode to above surface, and with a bit of a distance, for example 0.35. If like here, the projection isn't working properly, that may be because the scale of your plane isn't set up properly. So click Ctrl A and apply the scale. Another thing to notice here is that when the foot is on the ground, it is only starting to check the collision if the geometry of the ground is already above the position of the bone, which I showed you earlier is about 0.1 meter from the bottom of the foot. The fix is pretty simple, we need to duplicate the first shrink wrap modifier and change the settings so that it first starts to snap the foot below the ground to make sure that the collision will be properly checked and then the second modifier will make sure that the foot is now above the ground. The settings will be minus Z on the world space with a max distance on 0.1 meters, no face scaling, a snap mode inside. Now it will work properly, whatever is the position of the ground, if the ground is at a reasonable distance from the foot. Now let's set up the animation of the influence of those constraints. We work with driver to directly map the position of the foot in the air with the influence of the constraint. But first, let's rename the constraint for clarity. To properly set up the drivers, we first need to know the max height of the foot above the ground. Luckily, I already checked everything for you, and here are the data for all the different animations. We we'll store them in each armature with the custom properties. So under the Object Properties panel of the armature, under the Custom Properties tab, let's add two new properties. The first will be called foot z max underscore r for right, and the second foot z max underscore l for left. And type in the values for the run normal animations I showed earlier. Now with the control foot selected, let's go to the bone properties, right click on the z value, and click copy as new driver. Under the bone constraint, the final one, which is snap foot above ground, right click and set paste driver. Right click again and click on edit driver. The first thing we need to do is to add a new input variable to fetch the custom properties we just added. The target will be the armature itself, which is run normal. And the path is just the name of the property we added inside quotes and brackets. And we properly get the 0.275 value here. Now change the type of the driver to script expression and here we want the influence of this constraint to have a value of 1 when the foot is at its maximum height. So the expression will just be location divided by our new variable. Now if you move around the timeline, you will see that when the foot is at its maximum position, the influence is around 1 and when the foot is on the ground, the influence is nearly 0. Now for the influence of the two other constraints, we just need to revert that by adding a 1 minus at the beginning. So copy the driver, paste it here, edit driver, and add 1 minus. 
Once it's done, you can just copy it and paste it on the first one. And now when you play around the animation, it works really well. And the foot is snapping to the ground like it should. Now let's mirror all that to the second control box, select them both, and under the arrow of the constraints, you can just copy to selected everything. Now on the second one, we just need to remap the drivers. So paste your driver again and go to edit driver because we need to fetch the value of L and the same for the first property, which is going to be to control foot IK left. And we can leave everything else the same. Copy the driver and paste it on the second constraint. And on the third, if you remember correctly, we just need to remove the one minus so that the constraint influence is not inverted. And there is still one bug to correct, which is we need to uncheck the align to normal on the first foot thresholds constraints. So just do that on them both. And now when you play the animation, it works really well and everything is snapping to the ground properly. Great, so now instead of having to set up everything on the four other armatures, the easiest thing will be to duplicate everything here and just reassign the NLA strips animation of the other animations to this armature. So first, let's delete all the other armatures and duplicate the armature and rig of the one we just worked on. Let's rename the armature like before. And under the NLA timeline, we need to add the correct animation. For example, under the run fast armature, hit shift A and add the run fast strip. Delete the first one. Let's do the same for all the other armatures. Now, after we added the NLA strips corresponding to the armature, we also need to rename the strips itself. So just select the name of the armature, copy it and paste it right here. And we also need to change the foot Vmax value for each of the different rigs to those values. And now all our five armatures are properly set up to have the foot snap on the ground. Let's clean up everything a bit by also renaming the meshes. We are not going to use all those armatures and meshes directly, so let's select all that and put it in a new collection, which I will call Animation Library. Next, I want to parent all the armatures to a single empty, so I can move them around as a single block. Add a new empty and rename it Armatures Master. Select all the armature, then the empty, hit Ctrl P and parent all that. Now for the part of the mesh that we will actually use, select one of the meshes, duplicate it, and clear the parent with Alt P. Now parent this one to the armature master. You can also move it out of the animation library collection and hide this collection. Now this character mesh will be the main one that we will use. So we need to assign it to all of the five different armatures we created earlier, and we will work later to change the influence of each armature on this one. The first step of this setup is under the object data properties, we need to add a few more vertex groups. In fact, one for each of the five armatures. And for each group, we need to assign all the vertices of our mesh. And you guessed it, we need to rename each one as the name of the armature. And let's also rename our character mesh to main character mesh for clarity. After the vertex groups are added, we need to add some armature deform modifiers to map our new character mesh to each one of the armatures with the right vertex groups. And I want to set them up in the order of the slowest animation to the fastest. Now we need to check multi modifier on each one. And just to clean everything up a bit even more, we can rename all the modifier. And the final step to the setup of the base character is to go back again in the animation library and select all our animation NLA strips, 
and under action clip you can increase the repeat time by huge amount to be sure that it will cover the entire duration of our timeline and now this is it for the base setup of our character and that's it for this first part hope you learned something here the next part will be focused on making the infinite terrain generation and procedurally blend between the different animations feel free to reach out to me if you have any question thank you for watching and see you next time